All right, guys, welcome back. This is Anthony Dreyer for the boot camp reading order flow using the edge zones. We're going to get a little deeper into what the edge zones are and why they show you real time support resistance. This is the most important video of all of these videos. OK, so when you come in here, it's about the why, the when and the how with these edge zones. Why are the EZs real time support resistance? We'll cover that. When do they show or disappear? When would they get cut off? When would they extend? And then how to use them in multiple chart types, footprints, bars, candlesticks. You don't always have to use them in footprints, okay? So I want to get to the, if you haven't seen this, why does price move? I show this a lot. I have to show it once in a while throughout this boot camp. Picture of me here on the left, my father here down on the right. He used to always say, if you guys know how, you'll have a job. But if you know why, you'll be the boss. If you know how, you'll have a job. If you know why, you'll be the boss. Order flow is a big part of why price moves. It's going to show you the when to buy it and the when to, to sell it. When do I buy it? When do I sell it? That's what's important. Now, let's get into this buying and selling a car. I like to use a lot of metaphors and stories to give a sense of how important something is and um, how order flow kind of pertains to that. Let's just take a funnel, all right, and turn it upside down. What does this mean? Well, what this means really quick is if... These individuals equal buyers and these cars are sellers, all right, in this example. Let's just take a simple example of you got X amount of buyers down in here, but there's enough cars to facilitate facilitate a price that's right in here at the bottom or the mouth of the funnel, okay? Makes sense. The buyers and sellers are doing business. They're going back and forth in this area. Now, all of a sudden, the cars speed off and they're gone, but the buyers are still there. In fact, there's more of them. Well, let me back up a second. Let me back up. I got these cars flying in and all and everything. I was so excited when I seen I could do this. The cars come here at the top of this slide, right at the small part of the mouth of a funnel. That's where the new inventory is. Remember, sellers are these cars up here. So sellers are far away from buyers. If the buyers start to fill in the funnel, they kind of get drawn all the way down where less of them are able to fit to chase the inventory. So you create a thin spot, which now these green lines are going to show if price moves up like it does in this story, this green line or edge zone of near-term support resistance. All right. Just going over this again, understand when inventory changes, when sellers begin to evaporate, but buyers remain, price should go up. If we're selling cars or S&P E-minis. And I think this story, I've, I've told it to live groups and it really resonates as to one of the kind of um, the impetus of an edge zone. All right, so now let's take a look at this chart. This is just a simple bar chart with some red and green edge zones. But what we want to do is we want to zoom in on this bar chart and take a look at what's actually going on in a footprint. So what indeed you zoom in, here's what you see. You see imbalances that begin to happen right in here and sends out a red edge zone. So now let's draw this a little bit better. 500 times 40 right here. That's a red imbalance. Enough to meet our criteria so it sends a red line across, all right, as potential resistance. We get another red imbalance. Meets the criteria, sends a red band or a red line across. Just remember, from previous videos in this boot camp series, where these numbers come from. If they're red, that means there was a lot more aggressive sellers than buyers, and therefore price went down a little faster than normal and kicked off these red zones. That has to be back of your hand type of stuff when you're, when you're looking at all of these. So you remember three reds that came across, 
In fact, let me shrink this chart down. The chart above is just a bar chart, and the one below it is the same periodicity of 4 P and F, but a footprint. So you could see these three reds are the same as, you found my cursor, this red, this red, and this red. If I take this footprint back a little bit, we're going to find out where these reds came from. This one met the criteria to send this red one across. It's the same one as this guy up here. And you can see the market, how it went down and came up and used it as great resistance. You could see how it broke, put in these two reds, used it as great resistance for a while as the market shot down. Let's look at the greens for a second, both here on the left. These two greens are these two greens. If I move the chart over, you could see where this one came from, put in a green imbalance, many more buyers, 602 versus 15, shot this green line across, didn't work as great support, but it did rotate and, wrote and, and bounced off of it. The other green came in right in here, did work as pretty decent bottom of the range support, and that's this guy here if I move it over. This bar here is this footprint bar, and you could see... The speed of which it went up threw in a green zone so we have a better visual. That's this green zone right in here, and you could see it worked for rotational support until it doesn't. Here's what's really important about trading using the edge zones. They're great when they work. They're even better when they get breached. It's a very important part of this session. If you have good support resistance, that's what edge zones are, support resistance. But whatever you use for support resistance, that's what's great about this, this session is you could use what I'm going to say next for whatever support resistance you might want to trade. And that is if it's good and it doesn't work, that gives you a great bias that the other side is in control. That's if you've got good support or resistance. So right in here, when this green gets breached and starts to get taken out, you could assign that the bears are in control and maybe you want to play it from the short side. And that gets taken out right in here. Here's what it looks like down on a footprint. Gets breached in this bar right in here and it gets aggressively sold up here, sending this red across, working as great resistance here. When the new edge zones are put across, it rotates up. Remember the video in this series about rotation and how these bars and footprints rotate and down it goes. Well, let's take a look at this chart. You could see the market use the green edge zones as support in there. Resistance here, they get through it, new support there. Resistance in here, support there, resistance there, resistance here, there. Again, resistance in there. Some failing support right there. They use it as subsequent resistance back over there. And then down below, you could see how that well that support works. So what gets a bar to cut? You could see support holding in here, and there actually is a fight. Some aggressive sellers up here, aggressive buyers trying to create this fight. It dips below support right there. If a bar closes below support, it'll cut the green like it does there. And then as it rallies up, if it closes above resistance, it'll cut the red. So when a bar closes below support, It'll cut that line. If a bar closes above resistance, it'll cut the line. Let's take a look at a filtered bar chart of these edge zones, and then we'll look at it, what it looks like in a footprint. Big seller comes in, kicks the market lower until a big buyer appears right in there, kicks the market higher, works as great support, there, there, and there, showing you where buyers came in and how they're defending it. Now, you could see old support, new resistance come in, different shade of red, work is great resistance in here. Same thing, good resistance till it becomes decent support, kicks the market up till it then gets below it and uses the green line below as support. Now, this is what it looks like on a bar chart. If we want to drill down and look at a footprint, 
the same thing that you seen a moment ago, the 300, it happens to be a 300 lot right there, kicked the market down. 215, 215, kicked it up, created the consolidation till it took it out. Great support until it wasn't. We go over to the right a little bit, great support. This is what it looks like on a footprint. In fact, if I just show them side by side to get a sense of what means what, down here, let me throw a pen on it as well. This moment here is this moment up there. This 215 lot that came in as a buyer is this guy down here. You just get to see more when you put the footprint and the edge zones on a bar chart. I like to look at them both to see what the number is. Don't get me wrong. There's another way to look at the same thing and get the sense of what it's all about. But that's how you filter a chart. I'll show you in the next video and more of a tutorial on how to change the settings to see just big buying and selling and how the market reacts to it. Here's another great feature. We call them double stacks or trickle, triple stacks. So while you'll see a lot of reds and greens print, the only ones that are going to draw a line across is if you have them filtered for a double or triple or above. What do I mean by that? You see these are stacked, these two reds. They're a little thicker. That's because they had consecutive sellers come in. You see them thicker across this top line. Same, same thing. This is a bar chart with edge zones. Down below here is a footprint with edge zones. So let's see where this 34.35 even area of resistance, which worked great in here, worked great in here, worked great as support down in here. But on a footprint, let's see where that came to be. Let's blow this chart up. Let's take it back to the left a little bit to see where this double stack had come in. We don't see it yet. Here it is, 34.35 even came as part of this fight all in here. This thin spot in here shot these two reds across. This one lower at 33 came because of these consecutive levels. They duked it out, and you see, a, see it get spread across. You actually see some good support get spread right in here with this consecutive buyer, buyer that came in here. So the only lines that are going to go across, edge zone-wise, are double stacks or greater. And you could filter that out so you could cut a lot of the noise from a pairing and you could see if i blow the bar chart up you could see how well it worked as resistance all in here finally gets through it next area of resistance sells back off stuck short as you see the great support also down in here so if we don't have the lines going across but there is a tempo change and the market doesn't react like it should. In other words, quick sellers and it goes down, quick buyers and it goes up. That's a clue. And that's why in the trading room, and one of the keys to edge zones is to watch when what should happen doesn't happen. Let me show you this playback a second. We're gonna focus, we're gonna focus up here and what goes on to give us a clue that the upside might be the right side, all right? When green comes in, should goes up, should go up. When red comes in, it should go down. When it doesn't, it gives us a clue the other side might be likely. So let's watch. Market's going back. Here's a red, and there's a red. You see the two reds that just came in? So the market should go down. They disappear. Green comes in. Market should go down, and it's not, and it's not, and at some point, it's bullish. So instead of being trapped in that upside that you just saw, you're able to take advantage of it by seeing that that flow of orders to the downside didn't release it, and now the upside continues to be the right side. All right, guys, so what's the next step? Take you to the homepage of the edgetradinggroup.com. Go here, go up to the navigation bar under software. A couple things you could do. If you want access to the edge zones, go to that page, click on this edge zones link. It'll take you to 
Lee Harris over to Moji Trading. Lee has done a great job building these edge zones out for us. And um, he offers it on his website, totally separate from me. But he does a great job supporting all of this. Real responsive guy. If you already have Sierra and you just want the edge zones as an indicator, you can go ahead and hit yes, indicator only. If you don't have Sierra and you want to try it, hit include Sierra package. He does a free one-week trial. Hit sign up now and go on from there. Another thing you could do is go to the trading room. If you've already had a trial, you could elect to do a seven-day money-back guarantee. It's only $99 per month. Subscribe back on the um, website. Um, you've already done the trial, though, obviously. So those are your options or your next step as far as that goes. With the software, if you want to go ahead and get the um, edge zones as a tool, I share my layout so it makes it real easy for you guys to upload all the charts that you see on my screen. You actually, if I, uh, you guys have been in the trading room, this is the layout that you see from Sierra. So automatically you can import these charts once you're in Sierra and a trading room subscriber. I think you guys will get a ton out of it. And what's really nice about Sierra with these edge zones is they're a lot less expensive. Sierra's done a, um, in this industry, has really put price pressures on many other platforms. They give you a lot more for a lot less. I knew a um, whole bunch of guys that made the transition to Sierra, liked it, and that's why I've uh, tested it, like it, and have been using it now, uh, especially when the edge zones were made part of it by Lee and Emoji, and he created a lot of great features and criteria. And I'm going to do a tutorial video. Once you guys go ahead and you um, you do the trial, there will also be a tutorial video on how to get around these studies, how to change the criteria. It's pretty simple, especially with a few shortcuts. So hope you guys enjoyed this boot camp. Don't forget, you can get access to the edge zones, just like I, I mentioned, or access to continue real-time analysis using these edge zones as a tool to read order flow. I hope you enjoyed this boot camp series. Hope to see you in the room soon. Thanks for watching, guys.